tired of trying to keep track of the like 20 different Democrats running against Donald Trump in the presidential election? Are you tired of hearing about Trump at all, but still want to feel like you're staying informed? Here's the solution. Follow a different country's election. And I present the voting guide for Poland by a left wing American. Bonus, if you're Polish American, I have some links in the description about how you can vote in this October's election. Poland is this country here, home to delicious pierogi and hard to pronounce words. Their elections matter because Poland is currently very right wing and one of the most outspoken opponents of things like refugee settling in Europe as well as gay rights. Unfortunately, they've been the unofficial leader for other right wing countries' anti immigration efforts, such as Hungary and the Czech Republic. LGBT issues could be big in this election, as the ruling party's hateful rhetoric likely led to a pride march here ending in violence back in July. Basic facts. On the 13th of October, all the seats in the Polish parliament are up for re-election. The Senate and the same. That's like our House of Representatives. There are five platforms, each made up of different political parties. And those platforms range from the far, far right to the left. So let's take a look at what those five platforms believe in. First up is PIS, the right-wing party that currently runs the country. PIS stands for the Polish words for law and justice, Prawo i Sprawiedliwość. They're not a big fan of immigrants, gays, or the European Union in general. They've been in power since 2015. Let's look at PIS's greatest hits. Giving the government more control over media. Trying to stack the courts. Breaking EU laws in many ways, including illegal logging of forests and restricting public access to lawmakers' meetings. Let's not forget when they tried and tried to make abortion even more illegal, already illegal in Poland, unless you're raped or your life is in danger. And everyone's favorite political scandals. PIS's parliamentary speaker quit in August when it turned out he was using a government jet for private trips. Next, a deputy justice minister quit when an investigation showed he'd been spreading rumors about the personal lives of judges who'd criticized the majority party's reforms to the courts. PIS's strategy? Bribe voters. No, really. PIS has promised to increase retired people's monthly check and to raise the minimum wage right before the elections. This is in addition to the huge social program, 500 plus, which gives families 500 extra lattes every month if they have more than one child. That's right, every month. Yes, you can be both right wing and pro welfare programs. Don't tell Fox News or your grandparents. Our second runner-up is Kolacja Obywatelska, known as KO, the um, centrist conservative party. They've got the second most seats in the Polish parliament right behind PIS. While they're not nationalists like PIS, and they actually like the EU, they're still really conservative on a lot of social issues, keeping mandatory Catholic class in public schools, for example. I'm not going to call them religion classes unless it's an actual choice of religion. KO is the party of Donald Tusk, who is now president of the European Council. This party tends to do better in cities than, than in the countryside, as they're a little more center than PIS. They were edged out when they neglected to focus on social spending, a big issue. Interestingly, this election, this platform also includes the Greens, the environmental party. Like in Germany, the Green Party is not with a left-wing platform, as they happened in previous elections. So October's election will likely come down to PIS and KO taking the majority of seats in Polish Parliament. Both those two parties got the lion's share of votes back in May for the election for the European Parliament. Did I mention that Poland has a left wing? It does, albeit a very small left wing. Enter Lewica, the left wing platform. They're made up of three political parties, Rasem, Wiosna, and the Democratic Left Alliance, or SDL. Razum means together in Polish, 
which sounds very nice and inclusive. However, they just don't have their act together. They've never gotten enough votes or support to get many seats in Parliament, and they have yet to catch on at all in the countrysides or villages where PIS is very popular. While I've been a supporter of Rosam, they lent equipment to me when I organized a protest, I knew it was going down when I saw another political party walking around with flyers and rainbow flags in Poland this May. And Viosnet was founded in February of this year. Viosna, like Rosam, is pro-gay rights, women's rights, immigration, and eco-friendly policies. Founded by Robert Biedron, an openly gay Polish politician. Because politics in Europe is interesting, both Viosna and PIS, the right-wingers, support increasing minimum wage, as well as expanding 500+. plus. Estyal is the oldest of these three parties, formed right after the fall of communism in the early 90s, and are very socialist. I'm really hoping that Levitsa, this new coalition, can get a few seats in Parliament and the same. As right-wing as Poland is, it makes no sense for the left to fragment themselves the way they have. In addition, there are two other platforms. Kolacja Polska means Polish coalition. This is the party of centrists and libertarians. They're exactly what they say they are, a laundry list of political parties led by PSL, the Polish People's Party. PSL is mostly concerned with issues concerning farmers, which means this platform gets most of the rural vote. While PSL is the de facto leader, Cookies 15 is the most interesting party. Yep, that name sounds like Cookies and was funded by a former rock star, Pavel Cookies. While the party has recently cut ties with far-right groups, the leader had to apologize to Parliament after some nationalists got elected seats. Good times. So if PIS is the right wing, Confederacja are the far, far right wing, which is pretty scary given how nationalist PIS is. Luckily, this party didn't get enough votes in May to actually get any seats in the European Parliament. And let's hope it stays that way. Some technical info. In order for a party to get state funding, they have to get 3% of the vote. Both Levitsa, the Kolacja Polska of Libertarians, and that ultra-right-wing group also need 5% of the vote to actually get any seats in the Polish parliament. So, here's hoping that Levitsa, the new left-wing platform, will get some seats, and maybe KO will finally edge out PIS as the majority party. Here's hoping that Levitsa, the new left-wing platform, will get a few seats in Parliament, and I'm really hoping that KO will finally edge out PIS as a majority party. Then, maybe my phone can stop auto on my text to read PISS, even though that would be a little bit more appropriate. Remember, anyone with Polish citizenship can vote. You just, you just need to visit a Polish consulate or embassy. So, I thought about ending this video with a joke about drinking vodka to cope with hearing about current events. But that's so cliche. Instead, try chocolate. I recommend Machowski. Delicious Polish candy made with peanuts, but not peanut butter exactly, and it's the perfect thing to take the edge off politics. So, special thanks to Pawel Dombowski for agreeing to look over the script and giving me some tips and info about Polish politics. Again, my script advisor is Brianna Stallings. Thank you all for watching. If you like it, hit like or subscribe.